So if you own a BenQ SWU display, or you're thinking about getting one, you may have heard that these displays come pre-calibrated from the factory with various hardware color modes. You may wonder what are they there for? What purpose do they serve? Can I use these display right out of the box without calibration? Especially if you have been watching my videos, I'm always telling you to go out there and run a custom calibration on your BenQ SWU display with Palette Master Element. In this video, I'm going to answer all those questions for you and clarify all these things up so that you know how to use the built-in pre-calibrated hardware color mode in your BenQ SUV display. I'm Mark Suwensang, BenQ Ambassador. Let's get started. Before we start, please subscribe if you are new and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool new videos like this. These are the pre-calibrated color modes from the factory. And the reason why they're pre-calibrated that way is because each of the individual color mode that you choose will correspond to the color gamut of that color space. So for instance, when you choose Adobe RGB, you're gonna see that your picture become much more vibrant, much more saturated. When you go, for example, from Adobe RGB to sRGB, you're gonna notice that that picture looks a lot duller than the Adobe RGB one because the color space or the color gamut of sRGB is much smaller than Adobe RGB. And that applies to many of the other color modes that are built into this display too. These color modes are pre-calibrated from the factory as a reference color. That means that when you select, for example, Adobe RGB, it will give you the reference of what Adobe RGB will look like. This does not mean though that your computer is outputting Adobe eRGB signal to the display. So that is just something that we have to keep in mind that these color modes are really designed and put there for us to quickly get a glimpse, an estimation of what our picture would look like in that color space or any other creative content that we may do is going to render in that color space and not so much to use it as a strict guideline of this is how my picture is going to look and it's going to look exactly that way. So again, it's there as an estimate, as a guide, as a rough approximation. Yes, there are some downsides to using these pre-calibrated color modes from the factory, though they are good to show you what a reference color would look like. The problem is that our computer, our video card, each, every single one of them are outputting the signal slightly different. So we're not really outputting reference signal to our display. Unlike at the factory, when they're doing a the calibration, they're actually outputting reference signal to the display to run the calibration on these color modes. So that's the slight difference between the two, between our computers that we have versus what they have, the equipment at the factory. So that's just something to keep in mind. To get the best color possible, I highly recommend that you still go in and run Palette Master Element and custom calibrate your display so that it's paired directly with the output from your video card on your computer. So you may wonder what is the best way to use these pre-calibrated color modes? Well, there's two ways of doing it. Method number one, or the first way, is to simply go in and switch between different color modes just to get an approximation of what that picture will look like in that color space. Remember, keeping in mind that the video card output on your computer is not really outputting reference as RGB, or in this case, outputting reference Adobe RGB anyway, but this gives us a rough idea of what our picture will look like in that color space, in that color gamut. The second method of switching the hardware color mode on your BenQ display is going to be very similar to what I've showed you in method one. Simply go in and change the hardware color mode here by just pressing the hockey puck key. But in this case, what I'm going to do differently too is that I'm going to go into system preferences on the Mac and change the display output in this case so that we're outputting Adobe RGB 1998 profile to coincide with the hardware color mode on the display. Simply go into system preferences under display, color, and scroll up or down until you find Adobe RGB 1998. In this case, click on it, and you will see that the color is changing. So in this case, I'm matching the ICC output on the display to coincide with the hardware color mode. Let's do another one. Let's, for instance, change this to sRGB. 
In this case, we are outputting sRGB color gamut on the display at the hardware level. However, our profile is still Adobe RGB 1998. Simply scroll down here and select sRGB color profile, and you can see your color switching right away. So these are ways how you can go in and change the hardware color mode on the display and change the color output ICC profile so that it coincides with the color mode. This is not, again, the best method on how you can go in and change your ICC output on your profile. However, if you want to use this as a rough approximation or if you want to try to get even closer, it's a way of doing it. Next up, what I'm going to do is show you how you can do this on a Windows system. So now that I switch over to Windows, I'm going to show you how you can apply method number two in Windows 10. Keep in mind that if you don't have all the ICC profile on your system already, it may be a little bit involved initially to get everything set up. However, once you have it set up in the future, if you need to come back in and change it, it is fairly easy. So first of all, what I want to do is change my BenQ display to the hardware color mode that I want. In this case, I want to be in Adobe RGB, so I've just switched to Adobe RGB color mode. Next, what I'm going to do is from the desktop, right click, go to display setting and in the display dialog, scroll all the way down to the bottom, click on advanced display setting. From there, this dialog will pop up. Don't worry about selecting a monitor right now. Click on display adapter property for display one. A driver dialog like this will pop up on the third tab. There's a thing called color management. Click on that, then click on color management. From here, you can come in and choose the display. If you're not really sure what display number is your BenQ at this point, what you can do is click on identify monitors. It will show on the display a big number to tell you which display you're looking at. For me, my BenQ is display number two. I'm going to go ahead and choose display number two. From there, what I want to do is click on use my setting for this device. If I don't, I cannot load in the ICC profile. I'll show you right now. If I don't have that checked, the add button's grayed out. That means I can't load in any profile. So in this case, I want to check use my setting for this device. Now come and click on that. In this list, you will have all the ICC profiles that you have in your system, including any custom ICC profile that you have made. For me, I already have Adobe RGB 1998 installed on my system. I'm going to choose that from here. If you don't have Adobe RGB 1998 on your system, what you have to do is go to Adobe website and download the Adobe RGB 1998 from their website. I will put a link to download this in the description below this video. Once you have downloaded the ICC profile and extracted, what you want to do in that case is click on browse and find the ICC profile that you have just downloaded. In this case, I'm going to cancel out because it's already on my system. I'm highlighting Adobe RGB 1998, press OK. Now I have that set up. If I want to set up this profile as a default, I can say set as default profile. And just like that, I'm done. Now, what I want to do is also set up sRGB in this case too. So I'm going to change my display to sRGB mode here. Click on add one more time and find my sRGB profile. In this case, window has two sRGB profiles that's there, but what I want to do in this case is not use the window sRGB profile, but to load the generic sRGB profile in. Scroll down to the bottom, find this long sRGB file name right there. Click on OK. Now you have that loaded into your system. Once you're done with this, you can simply close everything out and you should be good. Now let's say that if this is on sRGB right now, and let's say I switch back to Adobe RGB, how do I go and change the profile? Do I have to dig through all that menu again? Not necessarily. Like I said, once you have it set up, it's fairly easy. Right click on the desktop, display setting. And in this case, what I want to do is click on display number two, which is my BenQ external display. And you will see there under color profile, I can choose a different color profile immediately. So right now I'm in Adobe RGB, I'm clicking Adobe RGB. If I change this to sRGB, what I can do then is click here to sRGB and now it will change the ICC output on my video card to sRGB. So this is how you can match the hardware color mode on your BenQ display to the ICC profile output from your video card on a Windows system. 
Keep in mind that this is not going to produce the most accurate color possible. And for the best color possible, what you want to do is run a custom calibration on your system. So what I would suggest in this case is to stick with method number one and just jump between these color modes just to roughly see what that picture will look like in those color spaces without trying to match the color ICC profile output to that specific color space on your computer as I've just shown you. There are a lot of ways how you can creatively use these color modes. One way, as I've talked about in this entire video, is to use it to quickly proof what that picture would look like in a different color gamut. But the other thing that you can do is all these display comes with advanced black and white modes. So you can turn the entire display into black and white and quickly get an idea of what that picture will look like compositionally in black and white. Keep in mind though that if you like to apply sepia effect or any other split toning or any colorization effect on your black and white, this will not show that because it's actually just turning the screen entirely into black and white. If you want to do that, you would have to switch and use one of the color modes or your custom calibrated mode to run that, turn your picture into black and white, then add a colorization. Another color mode here that I want to mention that I find very useful is right here. This is Mbook color mode. And this color mode is designed and tweaked specifically to match with any Apple built-in display, iMac, MacBook Pro, MacBook, MacBook Air for that matter, it will all match with this, provided that those color space or the colors that you're viewing on a Mac are the uncalibrated color space from the factory. It should match perfectly. And that's the great thing about using the Mbook mode. What I like about the Mbook mode is that, for instance, if you are a PC user, the great thing is that you can set the display into Mbook mode and you can get a rough approximation of what your clients or your customers who are using Apple products will see their picture and what their picture will look like on their Apple display. Remember though, that we as photographers, we calibrate a lot, right? We wanna make sure that our colors are correct, but most of the time your clients, they're just gonna use a device as they purchase them. They're not gonna go in and run a custom calibration. So this is gonna give you a rough idea of what that picture will look like to them when you're on a PC. So that's another creative use you can use there with these built-in hardware color modes on your BenQ SW display. Like I mentioned before, the built-in color mode here on your BenQ display is really there for you to approximate what that picture will look like in different color gamuts. The best thing that you can do for your BenQ SW display is to run a custom calibration on it using BenQ software called Palette Master Element. I have made multiple different videos and guides on how to calibrate your display with Palette Master Element, so make sure that you do check that out. Make sure that you run the calibration on it so that you can get the best color possible because once you run the calibration, a couple things are gonna happen. The display, all the adjustment is gonna be done at the panel level when you use Palette Master Element. So all the adjustments done here. Secondly, what the adjustments that's happening here is doing is that it's matching the output from the video card to the display. This way you're gonna get the best color possible when you run a custom calibration. So I still recommend that through and through. So if you purchase a BenQ SUV hardware calibrate display, what you can do is run it right out of the box without any calibration. It would still show you good accurate colors, but keep in mind that if you run a custom calibration on it, that color will be even much more precise and much more accurate than what you're seeing on the screen without any hardware calibration done to it on your end. So I hope that this video was able to clarify and explain why those hardware color modes are there and how you can use them in your creative workflow. If you have any questions about them, leave them in a the comment below. If you find this useful, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new, hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool new videos like this, and until next time, I just write.